I always wanted to go spend some time alone in the woods, but I never had the chance until last summer. So I decided to rent a cabin in one of the best campsites in the U.S., Emerald Beach RV Park in Navarre, Florida. It was a beautiful place, with a sandy beach, a fishing pier, a pool, and a playground. The cabin was cozy and comfortable, with a kitchen, a bathroom, a bedroom, and a living room. It was perfect for a solo getaway. I arrived at the campsite on a sunny afternoon and checked in at the office. The staff was friendly and helpful and they gave me a map of the park and the key to my cabin. I drove to my cabin, which was located at the far end of the park, near the woods. I unpacked my car and settled in. After a while, I decided to explore the park and enjoy the amenities. I walked along the beach, swam in the pool, and played some games at the arcade. I had a great time and met some nice people. I returned to my cabin as the sun was setting. I cooked some dinner and watched some TV. I felt relaxed and happy. At night, I decided to go to bed early, since I planned to go fishing the next morning. I locked the door and the windows, and turned off the lights. I got into the bed and fell asleep. But I woke up in the middle of the night to a loud noise. It sounded like someone was banging on the door. I jumped out of the bed and grabbed a flashlight. I looked through the peephole and saw a man standing outside. He was wearing a mask and a hooded jacket. He had a crowbar in his hand. He was trying to break into my cabin. I panicked and screamed. I quickly dialed 911. I told the operator that someone was trying to break into my cabin and that I needed help. The operator asked me for my location and told me to stay calm. She said that the police were on their way and that they would be there soon. I hung up the phone and looked at the door. The man was still banging on it. He was shouting something, but I couldn't understand him. He sounded angry and crazy. I was terrified. So I ran to the bathroom and locked the door. I hoped that he wouldn't get in. I hoped that the police would arrive soon. After a minute or so, I heard a loud crash. He had broken the door. I heard him enter the cabin. He was walking around looking for me. He was smashing things and cursing. I heard him come closer to the bathroom. He tried to open the door and realized that it was locked. He started to hit it with the crowbar. He was trying to break it. I screamed again. I looked around the bathroom, looking for something to defend myself. I saw a pair of scissors on the sink. I grabbed them and held them in my hand. I knew that it was my only chance. I waited for him to break the door. After about 30 seconds, the door swung open and he entered the bathroom. He saw me and smiled. He had a twisted grin on his face. He raised the crowbar and swung it at me. I dodged it and stabbed him in the chest with the scissors. He gasped and dropped the crowbar. He fell to the floor bleeding. He was still alive, but he was not moving. I was shocked and horrified. I dropped the scissors and backed away from him. I couldn't believe what had happened. I had stabbed a man. After about three minutes, I heard sirens outside. I heard voices and footsteps, and then I heard someone knock on the door. I heard someone say, Police, open up. I opened the door and saw two police officers. They saw me and the man on the floor. They asked me what had happened. I told them everything. They listened and nodded. They said that I had acted in self-defense and that I had done the right thing. They said that they would take care of everything and that they would take me to the station. They said that I was safe and that I was not in trouble. Thankfully the man didn't die, he survived, and I didn't face any charges. I decided to book a cabin for a solo trip to one of the best campsites in Sweden. Lexen Strand in Dalarna. It was located next to Lake Siljan, the largest lake in Sweden, and offered a variety of activities, such as swimming, hiking, biking, and kayaking. It also had a summer and water park, an outdoor pool, adventure golf, and playgrounds. It sounded like the perfect place to relax and have fun. I arrived at the campsite in late June, when the days were long and the nights were short. I had rented a cabin for a week, which was cozy and comfortable, with a kitchen, a bathroom, a living room, and a bedroom. 
The cabin was surrounded by trees and had a view of the lake. I felt like I had found a piece of paradise. The first few days were amazing. I enjoyed the warm weather and the fresh air. I explored the campsite and the nearby town of Lexand, which had a charming old church, a folk museum, and a bakery that sold delicious pastries. I met some friendly campers, who invited me to join them for a barbecue or a game of volleyball. I also tried some of the activities that the campsite offered, such as kayaking on the lake, playing adventure golf, and sliding down the water slides. I had a blast. But things changed on the fourth day. I woke up to a normal and sunny morning, which was typical for that time of the year. I decided to stay in my cabin and read a book, hoping to finish it before I left. I made some coffee and toast, sat on the couch, opened the book and started to read. I was engrossed in the story and didn't notice the time passing by. I was about to turn the last page when I heard a loud bang on the door. I jumped and spilled my coffee. I looked at the door and saw that it was shaking. Someone was trying to break in. I felt a surge of fear. I quickly ran to the bedroom. I locked the door behind me and hid in the closet. I wondered who was outside and what they wanted from me. The banging continued for a while. But then, after a few minutes, the banging stopped. I heard a voice outside saying, Sorry, wrong cabin. And then everything went silent. I wondered if it was a mistake or a joke. I wondered if I should go out and check or stay in and wait. I decided to stay in and wait. I waited for a few minutes until I was sure that whoever it was had left. I came out of the closet and got out of the cabin. I went to the reception. I told them what had happened. They said that they would offer me a refund and a free stay at another cabin. They said that they would do everything they could to help me. But it was too late. I had lost my trust and my peace of mind. I had no desire to stay here any longer. I still wonder who was banging on my door and why. I had rented a cabin for the weekend, hoping to enjoy some peace and quiet away from the city. I got there on Friday afternoon. The cabin was cozy and rustic, with a fireplace and a porch overlooking the forest. I decided to go for a hike on the first day, following a trail that led deeper into the woods. I packed some snacks and water, and set off with a smile on my face. The scenery was beautiful, and I felt relaxed and happy. I had been hiking for about an hour, when I heard a twig snap behind me. I turned around, expecting to see a squirrel or a deer, but there was nothing. I shrugged it off, thinking it was just the wind. I continued on my way, humming a tune. But a few minutes later, I heard another sound behind me. This time, it was more like a footstep. I stopped and looked back again, but still saw nothing. I felt a chill run down my spine and wondered if someone was following me. So I turned around and started hiking back to my cabin. I quickened my pace, hoping to reach the cabin soon. After a while, I heard more footsteps behind me, getting closer and louder. I started to panic and broke into a run. I didn't dare to look back, afraid of what I might see. I thought it might be a mountain lion or a crazy person. I prayed that I would make it to the cabin alive. After about ten minutes, I finally saw the cabin in the distance, and felt a surge of relief. I sprinted towards it, hoping the door was unlocked. I reached the porch, flung the door open, got inside the cabin, and slammed the door shut behind me. When I was inside the cabin, I glanced outside through a window, and my heart skipped a beat. There was a man standing near the trees, looking right at me. He was smiling wickedly, and waved at me. I don't know why, but right after he waved at me, he turned around and sprinted into the woods, disappearing from my sight. I never saw that man again, but I still wonder who he was and why he was after me. I saw an online ad for a cabin rental in one of the best campsites in Alaska, and didn't hesitate to book it. The campsite was called Quartz Creek Campground, near Cooper Landing. It was located on the banks of a stunning lake, surrounded by mountains and forests. The campground offered fishing, hiking, boating, and wildlife viewing. 
It sounded like the perfect place to spend a week alone, away from the stress and noise of the city. I arrived at the campground on a sunny afternoon in late August, checked in at the office and got the keys to my cabin. The cabin was a small wooden structure, with a porch, a kitchen, a bathroom, and a bedroom. It was cozy and rustic, with a fireplace, a gas stove, a fridge, and a bed. There was no electricity, no internet, no phone service. Just me and nature. I loved it. I unpacked my bags and decided to explore the campground. I walked along the lake, admiring the clear water and the reflection of the mountains. I saw a few other campers, mostly families and couples, enjoying the outdoors. I waved and smiled at them, feeling friendly and relaxed. I found a trail that led to a nearby waterfall and decided to follow it. The trail was easy and scenic, with wildflowers, berries, and birds along the way. I reached the waterfall after about half an hour and was amazed by its beauty and power. I took some pictures and sat on a rock, listening to the sound of the water and feeling the spray on my face. I felt peaceful and happy. I decided to head back to my cabin before it got dark. I retraced my steps and followed the trail back to the campground. After a while, I reached my cabin and unlocked the door. I stepped inside and felt a chill run down my spine. Something was wrong. The cabin was a mess. My bags were torn open, my clothes were scattered, my food was spilled, my bed was ripped. It looked like someone or something had ransacked the place. I felt a surge of fear and anger. Who did this? Why? How? I grabbed a kitchen knife and searched the cabin, looking for the intruder. There was no one. I ran out of the cabin and ran straight towards the office and saw a light. I felt a surge of relief. There were people there. I screamed. They heard me screaming and came out to see what was wrong. I told them about the cabin. They looked shocked and concerned. They grabbed some guns and flashlights and followed me to the cabin. They saw the damage and said it was a bear attack. They said it was rare, but not impossible, for a bear to break into a cabin. They said I was lucky to be alive, apologized for the inconvenience, and offered me another cabin to stay. I accepted their offer and moved to another cabin and stayed there. The thought of me being at the cabin when the bear came still gives me chills. I always wanted to go spend some time in the woods, in Maine, where I lived. So when I saw an online ad for a solo cabin rental at Papoose Pond Family Campground, I thought it was a perfect opportunity. The campground looked amazing, with a half-mile sandy beach, a heated swimming pool, and a variety of activities to enjoy. The cabin was cozy and rustic, with a fireplace, a kitchenette, and a porch overlooking the pond. It was supposed to be a relaxing and fun weekend, but it turned out to be a nightmare. The first night, I heard some strange noises outside my cabin. It sounded like someone or something was scratching at the door and the windows. I was scared, but I tried to convince myself that it was just a raccoon or a squirrel. I locked the door and turned on the lights, hoping that would scare away the intruder. I didn't sleep well that night, but I didn't see anything when I checked the next morning. I decided to brush it off and enjoy the day. I went for a swim in the pool, played some horseshoes, and rented a paddle boat to explore the pond. It was a beautiful day, and I felt more relaxed and happy. I met some friendly campers who invited me to join them for a barbecue later that evening. I accepted their invitation and returned to my cabin to freshen up. I was looking forward to a nice meal and some good company. But when I got to my cabin, I saw something that made my blood run cold. There was a message written in blood on the door. It said, I know you're alone. I'm coming for you. I screamed and ran back to the main office, where I told the staff what I saw. They called the police and escorted me to a safe place. They said they had no idea who could have done such a thing, and that they were sorry for what happened. The police arrived and searched the cabin and the surrounding area. They found no signs of the person who wrote the message, but they did find something else. In the woods behind the cabin, they discovered a campsite with a tent, a fire pit, and a pile of bones. They said they were human bones. I was shocked and horrified by what I learned. 
I couldn't believe that someone had been stalking me. I wondered how long they had been there, and what they wanted from me. I felt sick and terrified, and I wanted to get out of there as soon as possible. So I packed my things and left the campground, never looking back. I swore to myself that I would never go camping again. It was the worst weekend of my life. I found a cozy cabin online and booked it for two nights. It looked cute and comfortable, with a fireplace, a kitchen, and a bedroom. It was located in a remote area, surrounded by trees and nature. I was excited about it. I arrived at the cabin on a Friday afternoon. It was exactly as I had hoped it would be, cozy and welcoming. I unpacked my bags and made myself at home. I decided to stay in and enjoy the cabin, rather than go out and adventure. I made some coffee, lit the fireplace, and watched a show. I felt calm and happy. I had dinner, read a book, and went to bed. I slept well and woke up refreshed. The next night, however, was different. I was lying in bed, about to doze off, when I heard footsteps outside the cabin. They sounded heavy and steady, like someone was walking with a goal. I stiffened and listened, hoping it was just a squirrel or a fox. But the footsteps continued, getting closer and closer to the cabin. I heard them stop at the door, and then a loud thud. I gasped and got out of bed. I grabbed a flashlight and a hammer. I sneaked to the door and looked through the peephole. There was no one there. I felt a wave of relief, thinking it was just a pine cone or a stone. But then I heard another thud, this time from the window. I looked outside through the window and saw a dark figure standing outside, wearing a hood and a mask. I couldn't see their face, but I felt their stare on me. They raised their hand and thudded again, harder. I shrieked and ran to the phone. I tried to call 911, but there was no connection. I realized I was in the middle of nowhere, with no one to help me. I felt a surge of panic and horror. I ran back to the bedroom, locked the door and barricaded myself. I hid under the covers and prayed. I heard the footsteps again, this time louder and quicker. They circled the cabin, trying to find a way in. They slammed on the door and the windows, making a lot of noise. I heard them scream and curse, but I couldn't tell what they were saying. They sounded angry and crazy. I wondered who they were and what they wanted from me. I wondered if they were alone or if there were more of them. I don't know how long it lasted, but it felt like forever. After a while, the footsteps went away. I stayed under the covers, too scared to move. I waited for the sun to rise, hoping it would be safe then. I waited for hours until I heard a bird chirp. I peeked out of the window and saw the dawn. I felt a surge of hope and relief. I got out of the bed, ran to the door, moved the furniture, and opened the door. Then I went outside the cabin, but I saw no footprints outside, no sign of anyone being around. The cabin looked untouched, as if nothing had happened. I wondered how that was possible. I wondered if I had imagined it all. I was really scared, so I quickly packed my things, got in the car, and drove away. I had rented a cabin in the woods for a weekend. The first night, when I was lying in bed, reading a book, I heard a loud bang outside, like a gunshot. I jumped up and ran to the window, but I didn't see anyone or anything. The woods were dark and silent, except for the occasional rustle of leaves or the hoot of an owl. I tried to calm myself down, thinking that maybe it was just a hunter or a firework. But still for my safety, I decided to lock the door and the windows and turn on all the lights. I didn't sleep well that night. I wished I had brought a weapon, but I was alone and vulnerable. The next morning, I woke up to a bright sun and a clear sky. I felt a bit more relaxed, thinking that maybe it was all in my head or that whoever was out there had left. I decided to go outside and explore the surroundings a bit. I put on my jacket and boots and grabbed a flashlight and a knife, just in case. I stepped out of the cabin and walked around the perimeter, looking for tracks or marks. I didn't find anything unusual, except for some animal prints and some fallen leaves. So I decided to venture deeper into the woods, 
following a trail that seemed to lead somewhere. I walked for about an hour, until I reached a clearing. There I saw something that made my blood run cold. It was a body. A human body. A man, lying on the ground. He was wearing a camouflage suit and a hat, and he had a rifle next to him. He looked like a hunter, but he was clearly dead. As soon as I saw the dead body, I felt a surge of fear and panic. I turned around and hiked back to the cabin, as fast as I could. I didn't look back. When I reached the cabin, I slammed the door behind me, locking it. I grabbed my bag and threw in whatever I could find, clothes, food, water, books, flashlight, knife. I didn't have time to think or pack properly. I just wanted to get out of there. After packing up my stuff, I ran out of the cabin, threw my stuff inside my car, and drove away. I never told anyone about this experience, because I didn't want to get involved in whatever this was.